Thank you, Jimmy, for the transition there. And thank you everyone for coming to the Visual AI and Healthcare Meetup. Uh, so just a brief overview of uh, Voxel 51's vision. It's all about trying to bring transparency and clarity to the world's data, you know, and that includes, of course, uh, medical data, you know, and we kind of find that the more that the ML world continues to evolve, the more that we see that you really should be investing in your data sources and your data sets, because there's always going to be a new model that comes out next week. And there's always going to be a new thing that you need to pivot to. Uh, what's going to stay the same is that data you're training on. So creating high quality data sets with high quality annotations and metadata on it is what's going to ultimately lead you to the uh, most success in production. Uh, in healthcare, this can look like organizing millions of samples uh, in multiple different types of formats and wrangling those all in one place to be your single source of truth. You can easily find and eliminate po false positives and find these uh, uh, you know, erroneous errors that the model is making, uh, as well as you can do additional things in terms of the pre-processing and augmenting of your data sets, such as the de-identification of patient data, as well as you know, in the case of catastrophic data loss, maybe you're doing a new type of automatic labeling uh, you can always data set version uh, your data sets in the 51 Teams version. Uh, that way, if there ever is a model that you've trained on and you may be an uh, annotated with it and it's not up to your, uh, you know, your specs, you can always roll those data sets backwards. Uh, so some of the key challenges that we're seeing, uh, you know, contributing to this rise of automatic annotation in healthcare is the rising costs of medical care. You know, we see 43% of Americans, uh, you know, have family members who are avoiding medical care due to costs. Uh, there's this worldwide doctor shortage going on. And probably the most important one is that it's very time intensive to give patients the care that they deserve. Uh, you can see that, you know, uh, doctors right now are spending more than 16 minutes per patient to uh, scan their records, look through their uh, CAT scans, x-rays, whatever it might be. Uh, so by no means do I think we're at a state where we can uh, you know, turn it all over to the AI, as you know, we just heard. Uh, it's all about collecting the most information for that doctor so that they can make a educated decision of what is the best next care in your healthcare journey. Uh, so some of the ones ways we're seeing visual AI uh, being impacted and used in 51 and across the field today uh, is with this computer-aided uh, detection. Uh, we also, you know, are looking at monitoring disease progression over long periods of times, so whether these are segmentations in the brain, things like that, uh, preoperative surgical planning, um, surgical guidance, uh, helping people with vision loss, and the slip and fall detection has always been a classical computer vision problem. Uh, so we're going to look at some examples today of, you know, helping uh, look at some scans, uh, such as uh, CAT scans here. We just heard all about x-rays, as we also have some examples on that. Uh, but you can also think about these as a way to monitor the disease progression. Not only can you do a CAT scan to determine all the different body parts and if there's any tumors in the CAT scan, uh, but you can also do this over long periods of time, so multiple scans, maybe every couple months, to see how people are changing over time and kind of track these long-term diseases such as Parkinson's or cancer or other ones uh, using these new state-of-the-art segmentation models. Likewise, we can use these segmentation models to help with surgery, uh, by being able to correctly identify specific organs and body parts inside during surgery to make sure that, uh, you know, the ones that need to be uh, touched are being touched and the ones that need to be avoided are being avoided. Uh, we can see that even over 80% of complex surgery can be automated today with the state-of-the-art robotic models. Uh, so switching over to an example here, let me move my Zoom widget bar. Uh, we're going to start with the Vista 3D model on the total segmentator 50 data set. So to give you guys a brief overview of what this total segment data, uh, data set is all about, it features multiple different types of CAT scans coming from different uh, illnesses, genders, institutes. Uh, it even has different types of uh, CAT scan models, uh, different type of files. Uh, it even tells you what the manufacturer is. Uh, so this is all available to see exactly all the metadata that you want to store on top of your data set is all possible within 51. All this can be sorted, filtered, uh, sliced on to find exactly the subset of the data set you're looking for. So if you're looking for a specific age, uh, the illness, or other uh, metadata you know, filter that you might be interested in, it's very easy to slice through all of these. Uh, for instance, if I go through uh, my manufacturers, I can be, or let's do uh, pathology is a more interesting one, I can very quickly kind of drop this down and select uh, only tumors or inflammation, whatever uh, illness I'm concerned with at the time. And then when we click into this, 
we can actually see this CAT scan play. So to be uh, to give you some context of the data we're looking at, this is a true CAT scan, right? I have a video of the CAT scan slices here to be visualized for you, uh, as we don't have a CAT scan uh, visualizer where we can actually explore the 3D uh, model uh, for this demo today. Uh, but with this slice, uh, we're passing the CAT scan uh, file into NVIDIA's Vista 3D model, um, which I can give you a little show into. Uh, you can check it out here if you just Google Vista 3D uh, from NVIDIA. It's one of the new foundation models that they've built, uh, which you can access using their APIs. Um, it's very easy to use. Uh, you can even pull it onto your own Dockers and such if you have the proper NVIDIA setup. However, uh, I've been able to load it onto this data set for you guys today to explore what it looks like. Uh, so we'll play the video first and kind of watch it progress. Uh, so if we pause at any point, we can see all the different segmentation maths, and they're all labeled with the different parts of the body uh, as they associate with. So you can uh, specify specific classes that you're looking for. You can specify uh, all classes, which is what I did in this case, because that's always the most fun. And you can kind of watch this go through your entire CAT scan and see it identify all the different organs that this segmentation model has been taught to learn. Uh, you can also use this to find things like tumors, as tumor is one of the classes uh, included inside this CAT scan. But we can actually watch this over multiple different CAT scans. You can just hover over the field to watch them explore. And the way that this tool and this model has been built for today is just in the aiding of doctors to help them understand the scans. Maybe if you're learning to uh, you know, uh, identify CAT scans, if you're new to the field, um, this is a great way to help learn and annotate your data. It is uh, recommended on the NVIDIA website, as we've kind of been mentioning throughout this uh, series of meetups and talks, uh, that you, know, you should not be using these as the end-all be-all of diagnoses, uh, but it is a great way to annotate automatically your CAT scan data sets to be, order, to be able to you know, feed whatever those downstream tasks might be if you're training a model and specifically uh, locating the liver or the lungs, uh, if you're looking for certain type of illnesses, uh, this is a great way to label your data set. And it comes with a very rich metadata as I previously showed you, uh, where we can actually uh, sort, filter, and slice on you know, all these different fields uh, to help you understand exactly what is happening, whether the person is perfectly healthy, or maybe we're seeing some inflammation in their CAT scan. Um, this, what you're seeing here is on our 51 teams version, uh, 51 teams is a way for you to upload your data sets and connect to the cloud. Uh, so all these are located on a Google cloud bucket. This way, whenever new data comes in, if I down, you know, if I drop 50 new CAT scans into my data set here, I can have them automatically be annotated with the Vista 3D model by just, uh, using a plugin. For instance, we have many plugins like apply model. Uh, I can tell it to apply the Vista 3D model to all of my data set, and then be able to, uh, when it comes time to explore these CAT scans, uh, you know, whenever it comes time to look at them, I already have my model's segmentation results on there. I have all the metadata uh, located. So that way, if I have a new patient that came in, uh, maybe showing signs of inflammation, I can compare that to all the previous patients I know that have also shown signs of uh, inflammation, allowing you to kind of compare and contrast one patient samples to another patient samples to find all the different similarities. Uh, we can even take advantage of our embeddings in this case, where I've generated embeddings on my data set. So let me clear my filters again so we can start anew. Uh, and from here, you can see I have this embedding space generated where I can actually select different CAT scans to find uh, the different groupings here. And I can even color by the different uh, features inside of them. So I can color by things like pathology to see if any of the pathologies seem to line up to each other. Uh, so we see some grouping of vascular data here as well as on the right. But on the left, we see more inflammation and uh, no pathology. Likewise, we can also see if these are grouped based more on their scanner models, uh, which is good that it's not the case. Our embedding model is intelligent enough to look past just the fact that, you know, hey, this one is a square scan and this is a circle scan. Uh, it's actually looking at the actual frames inside of our CAT scans to diagnose what is happening in those. So you can imagine if you have not just 50 CAT scans, but thousands of CAT scans, you can create this rich tapestry of distributions to understand exactly all the different uh, groupings of your data, 
uh, whether it's things like scanner models to make sure that those aren't the same, or if you're more interested in things like gender, see if we color by gender, if there's any differences. If we color by age, we can see if there's any differences. And we can see that there is a very uh, diverse distribution here, which just means, of course, uh, hopefully this gets you excited as a computer vision engineer, that there is a true uh, problem to be learned here that there is, it's not a simple problem. It's not so simple as just uh, you know calculating embeddings and looking at scans and getting to a diagnosis. Healthcare is a very sophisticated thing. And Voxel 51 is dedicated to building the tools to help you build the best healthcare models for you. Uh, so this uh, example here for Total Segmenter 50 is available online. If you ever wanna take a look, just head over to try.51.ai and you can find the Total Segmentator 50 demo there, which has this Vista 3D uh, segmentation mass loaded already on top of it. Uh, this is one of the models that we'll be showing you for some automatic annotation on CAT scan data. Uh, after our next break, we'll be looking at uh, the MedSAM2 model, which came out recently, which uh, Jimmy mentioned earlier, is a fine-tuned derivative of the new SAM2 model. And so, uh, you know, I'm excited to show that one as well. Uh, I want to give plenty of time for our next uh, speakers here. So I'll answer some questions uh, before we move on. And I couldn't have a uh, better queue up uh, from Dr. Bernard than talking about MedSAM2. So um, probably many of you here are familiar with uh, SAM2 and have seen it, uh, you know, maybe in the news, LinkedIn, wherever you get your computer vision uh, daily. Uh, it's uh, obviously blowing up the whole field, but now we can see that there, there are some derivatives coming from it, uh, namely the medical SAM2 model. Uh, now, this model is a fine-tuned version of the SAM2, but it leverages all of the really neat uh, under-the-hood um, video technology that SAM2 has created with it. So uh, what SAM medical SAM2 uh, is able to do is you can evaluate uh, 2D medical images or 3D medical images as a video, uh, similar to what we just saw before with CAT scan videos is what we'll look at again. Uh, but this works for more than just CAT scans. You can do other type of medical imagery as well. And then from there, you're able to then segment uh, based on prompts, uh, whatever you're looking for in your data set. So the GitHub page here gives a lot of interesting examples for 2D uh, using optic cup segmentation uh, and also 3D for abnormal multiple organs segmentation. Uh, super easy to get started. Uh, SAM2 is already uh, inside the Voxel 51 uh, environment, but soon we'll also have Medical SAM2 as part of our zoo uh, environment as well. So to get started, it's pretty easy. Uh, there's one thing that we need to do beforehand is we need to form the prompts from an existing data set. So here we're using the BTCV CT uh, data set, which is available on Hugging Face. You can uh, easily grab this uh, from Hugging Face using the load from hub uh, function inside the 51 utils. Uh, you can load that data set. And then from there, we just need to form a prompt data set. And what that basically means is when you prompt SAM2, right, the objective here is to have a small number of detections on your data set that you've manually annotated. And then SAM2 will look at the video, look at the detections you're using to prompt the data set, and then fill out the rest of the data set or whatever you, uh, however many frames you decide to fill out with uh, SAM2 segmentations in between. So there's two ways you can do this. You can do it unbounded here with uh, just the prompt frames fraction, uh, no amount of max prompt frames or organs or anything like that. Or if you have a smaller GPU or you don't have a GPU, uh, you can uh, limit this frame fraction, uh, limit the amount of max prompt frames and limit the uh, organs you're detecting. Uh, this is the one I will be demoing you today because I unfortunately do not have unlimited resources. Uh, once you get there, all you need to do is load the zoo model for MedSAM2. And then from there, you can apply the model very easily to your prompt data set. Once again, we're just passing in these detections to prompt our MedSAM2 for what we're looking for. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Once again, we're here in the 51 Teams environment where I've applied this model onto my data set in the cloud. Uh, we have a CAT scan stored as video frames here. Um, and from here, we have three de detection fields. I'm going to explain them very briefly. Uh, this frames ground truth detection will be used for our prompt into MedSAM2. This frames ground truth segmentation is the ground truth for what SAM2 should be outputting. 
And then we have our MedSAM2 segmentations. So what we are seeing here uh, in my resource limited uh, you know, example here, uh, that I can go from four detections or four instant segmentations to 60 instant segmentations based off that prompt. This number can be even higher. If you have larger GPU space, you can add more classes uh, and you know, get finer grained results with a larger parameter model um, that is all available for you. Uh, but here we're looking at a bare bones, uh, you know, what is the bare minimum uh, that MedSAM can give you? And from here, we can see already that, you know, uh, we can go from four to 60 segmentations. Uh, so let's turn these off and play the video to see uh, what our four detections are that we're prompting MedSAM to, to kind of give us context of what we're looking at. Uh, it's going to come up right at the end here. We see the liver for a little bit, and then we're going to see the liver again, and we might see the liver one more time. And that's all we're giving SAM to. Uh, so now we can restart this video, uh, but now let's turn on both the MedSAM2 as well as the original prompt. So now when we replay the video, we have SAM2 fill in the frames that we're interested in to try to detect the liver uh, in this CAT scan video. So as the, the liver begins to show, we can see MedSAM2 filling it out, tracking the liver throughout the entire CAT scan until it goes away. Now, there are obviously some errors that come up, of course, sometimes. I don't believe this is the liver anymore. I'm not a doctor, so I can't be confident. But you can see, especially in these intermediate results, uh, how much more we can fill in these annotations uh, as a really great alternative than manually annotating every single slice of your CAT scans. Uh, if we want to compare this to the overall ground truth, it does not so bad for you know, the smallest model available. So when we turn on the ground truth, we can see the very beginning of a liver here. Or actually, this is even this is the aorta and the other one. So as we continue, we can turn this on to values so we can see all the different segmentation masks here. Let me close out the video and go back in. And so when we see uh, with the ground truth segmentations on this time, we can see what MedSAM2 is able to capture versus what the ground truths really are. So as we get time for that liver, we can see the liver being captured, this purple blob, and SAM2 capturing it at the same time. So you're going to be able to get very high accurate results here on the liver uh, using just MedSAM2 on a very small amount of frames. So once again, we have two frames here that we're prompting MedSAM2 for. We're going to get 23 out. And when we go through our slides here, we're going to look for that liver again. And as we get time to reach the liver, we can see it pop up here. And that is all getting captured by MedSAM2 at the end when the first prompts come in. Once again, like I mentioned, it's not perfect. This model just came out. If we go back to uh, the, the repo, you can see this is only within the last two weeks or month. Um, I would believe that this is only going to get better. But it's very easy for you to upload slices of your CAT scans into 51 and then start loading in these CAT scan segmentations. Uh, like I said, this doesn't work for just CAT scans. You can apply this to other types of segmentation models that you have or other types of medical scans that you have, as long as MedScan, MedSAM2 can support it. And then you can prompt one class, many classes, or no classes at all to try to see what everything that could be found. And you can go from uh, you know, a small amount of detections to a very verbose data set, as you can see. So from only four manually, manually uh, annotated selections, we can go from four to 60 and you know, essentially, you know. 10 times or even more your data set uh, with only a couple clicks. It's all very easy to use, like I showed here. It's a very clean cut notebook to get started. I only have two blocks here. Uh, it takes about you know a couple minutes to run to get the segmentations running. And what's so interesting about MedSAM2 and SAM2 in general is that we're no longer just looking at frame by frame, right? We actually have attention uh, using the video generator that's built into SAM2 to have this attention uh, across multiple frames. So if we saw the liver in the last frame, we're going to keep that in mind whenever we look for the liver in the next frame. Uh, it's a very powerful engine that SAM2 has created, and MedSAM2 is uh, doing fantastic work building on top of that, uh, especially in how much limited time has been uh, since that model has come out. So I will answer any QAs or any questions that anyone may have. Uh, there will be a blog available on this soon if you want to get started. There's also a branch if you want to uh, get your hands on it today because uh, you're excited. We have a branch available 
you know, the beauty of being um, an open source company here is if I go to our GitHub page, we have a branch called Feature MedSAM2. And this will have the MedSAM2 loaded onto it. And if you want to know how to use it, you can head over to our pull request, uh, grab that MedSAM2 pull. It might be already closed as well. And actually figure out the prompts and everything, how to use it right away. So it's super easy to use. I personally just tried it for the first time last night and it worked like a cinch. Um, I'm so excited to try other medical data sets with it now too. Uh, and everyone can try this and uh, everyone can get a swing at this with only a couple of steps to get started. Uh, so if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them either now or offline. Uh, feel free to shoot me on LinkedIn. If you ever have any follow-up questions, I'll drop it in the chat again. Uh, but thanks, Jimmy, for the time here, and we can hand it over to the next speaker.